This is going to demonstrate a subcuticular suturing method. And for the sake of this video, I went ahead and stretched the fake skin over a board just so that you can hopefully see inside the depth of the wound better. Now, traditionally, when we talk about suturing, and if you are a right-handed suturer, for a running stitch, you would start at the left side and pull to the right. In this type of sewing, you're actually gonna start on the right and pull in line with the incision to the left. So we're gonna talk about how to complete this suture as well as some indications as we go through this video. So normally when you're starting any type of a runner, you would start away from you and you would start outside the tissue. But the goal of a subcuticular stitch is for everything to essentially be buried. So typically you would do this in a running fashion. We'll discuss indications for doing interrupted as well. But the goal is that if this is the skin, nothing can be visible to the patient. So because of that, we need to start toward us and we need to start inside the depth of the wound. So oftentimes you'll hear people discuss it as being six o'clock. So the base of that clock, you really wanna rotate that needle around. And so now because I have come toward me on that first throw, I need to go away from me on the second throw. So now we're essentially going from 12 o'clock to six o'clock because again, the goal is to have that knot be buried at the base of the incision. Now the problem with some of these suture pads is that sometimes the suture material actually pulls through the second layer. But the point of the video is really just to demonstrate the technique of how this is done. So now that I have both of these through, another thing you want to ensure is that both of these strands are on the same side so that one is not sticking to essentially the right of your suture and the other one to the left. You want both of them in the same direction and particularly in line with the wound. So for the sake of brevity here, we will do an instrument tie. But again, you're gonna notice that the knot is essentially at the depth of the wound. On your own suture pads, if that's what you're using, just try not to pull too tight. I know that sounds counterintuitive. You're really trying to seat that knot, but what might end up happening if you pull too tight is that you'll actually tear through the pad itself. Trust me, that will not happen on your patient. I like to leave this, certainly not that length per se, but let's cut it just a little bit shorter. This tag, I then typically will place underneath the suture material to allow it to drag in line with the incision. Doing so helps ensure that the knot, even though it's at the depth of the wound, however it was tied in an up and down fashion, I want it to kind of pull in line with that tissue. Now, as you continue to throw your additional sutures, your needle will always stay placed in your needle driver as it always is, okay? And, but because you, you sewed initially first towards you, the next one needs to be away from you. So you're gonna come towards you here because you completed that first knot and you're going to be inside the wound. Let me over exaggerate this a little bit if I can. Go into the wound, use your pickups to walk down the wound to see where your needle is going to exit. So you're essentially snaking down the wound itself and you're going to pull in line with the wound. And see how that's gonna just tuck that tail down underneath it? Now, you can use this marker to kind of go across and say, well, I could enter right here, of course, in the subcuticular area. However, most clinicians tend to step back just a touch, just a millimeter or two. I think it helps to reapproximate that tissue better Now, oftentimes I would use a monocryl for this type of closure. Again, subcuticular, everything's going to dissolve. You can do this on a interrupted fashion. You would just essentially throw a lot of the, the six to nines and the, 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 excuse me, the six to 12 and the 12 to six over and over again. Those you could do with Vicryl. I liked to use that for a fascial closure.
And again, the thought is there, if they were to break one of the sutures, then it wasn't the entire line that was problematic for the patient. It was just simply that one area. So where do we typically see this used? Oftentimes in plastics closures. This is a great closure for a thyroid, great for a carotid, um, an area that really isn't under a lot of uh, tension in terms of the platysma muscle. Uh, all of those are wonderful areas to use this type of a stitch. So again, you're just essentially weaving. If you can imagine you went here, you came from the depth of the wound to that 12 o'clock position, on the contralateral side away from you went in at 12 and out at six. And now you're just gonna weave this way and then step back just a little bit, weave, make that U-turn and then complete the U-turn. But never truly completing a full circle per se because you do want to go just a little bit behind that throw. Now again, the, the intention here is that these never come out, uh, that these will dissolve completely. So you could use a proline, although that's gonna be a longer course. You could use a monocryl because that's wonderful in terms of the time frame that that wound is expected to be healed and the tensile strength that the monocryl will lose. Now I've ended on the side away from me on purpose because I want to finish by doing that first knot that I completed at the beginning. So again, I wanna go into the depth of the wound itself. I wanna pull from six o'clock and pull it to 12 o'clock. And most people kind of use the clock analogy, although I will say in practice, it's not a true six to 12. Now I'm here, I'm toward me. I wanna go away from me now. Again, you really use your forceps to kind of pull that tissue. Um, the patient's either anesthetized under general anesthesia when you're closing the patient, or if you've elected to do this and you're doing some type of plastics procedure in the office, hopefully they've had some type of anesthetic lidocaine, uh, marcaine placed into the wound so it's not uh, painful for the patient. Now again, this is not a locked. We've got our bunny ears here as well as our straight, similar to any other runner. And again, I'm just going to do a instrument closure here. Some people, there are a couple of different ways that you can tie this and close this at the end. This is how I was trained. Uh, you'll, you will see some other general surgeons out there that use a slightly different closure. And this is a perfect closure that they'll use actually for laparotomy or laparoscopic procedures to close the umbilical area, to close the ports. Now the one thing you'll do here is you can take this knot, just the side that has the two loops on it, you wanna cut almost all the way down to the knot there. And in order to ensure that this pulls through and that, that knot doesn't come back up, I pick up the skin. You can go on either side. I go actually into the wound itself. I typically go a little bit deep to that knot, pull out through normal tissue, but again, it's still cleansed tissue because you would have painted a larger surgical field. Pull this taut push down on the tissue, push down on the skin, cut right at the skin level. And if I take this out and allow this to come together as normal tissue would, you can see how nothing is gonna be external and that's exactly how your patient's going to close. Now, to supplement this, oftentimes in surgery, you would see them either put steri strips over this or some surgeons will actually dermabond on top of this but the goal is for this to be a completely subcuticular closure that nothing needs to be removed from the patient. Some might ask why you would not use this in an urgent care emergency room uh, situation for a suture for a laceration. The concerning thing there is how clean was the wound at the time of the suturing. When we talk about a surgical procedure, we have a surgical wound, so we should have a clean wound uh, that's not typically the case when we talk about emergency medicine or urgent care. This would be an indication for someone that wanted a good cosmetic closure on the face and it was a relatively clean laceration. I have done that on time, on occasion in the emergency department. You just have to make sure that you have a compliant patient 
and if there were any issues with the wound that the patient would actually have appropriate follow-up.